In this tutorial, we will discuss the channel strip, again, help you get greater understanding about what it does and how it does it, how it interacts with other channel strips to create a complete piece of music. Some of the new terms that we'll be using in this tutorial will be busing, submixes, and mixes. Okay, first thing I thought I would do is let's take a, a short review actually looking at a real Pro Tool session, one that I'm working on right now, and uh, see these different audio signal paths as they are used to create a, a complete piece of music. Here is a Pro Tool session I mentioned that I'm working on. Now, each of these I mentioned earlier was an individual microphone or an individual sound source, okay? Each track. You can see here I've got recorded a basic drum kit. Let me play this for you. Okay, and you can see I've got these soloed right now, just so we can hear the individual drum tracks. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of different tracks that are being used to create this drum sound. In this case, I have two different bass drum mics, a mic inside the bass drum and one outside, a snare mic, a mic underneath the snare, hi-hat mic, three tom mics, overhead cymbal mics, ambient room mics, and a mic I call the crotch mic, which sounds worse than it is. So it's just stuck between the snare drum and the bass drum. So it's down by my right kneecap, basically. Okay, so these mics then all constitute the basic drum sound that you heard. But if we listen to each individual sound, you notice that you can also hear other sounds in that bass drum mic. Okay, I can also hear the snare drum kind of in there and the hi-hat in there, toms. But it is mainly the bass drum. Okay, that is something that's called bleed, where you're getting A variety of the other instruments also in that track. Here's the snare track. Okay, I can hear the bass drum, and I can hear the hi-hat. Okay, here's the underneath snare mic, and the hi-hat. Here's the overheads. Here's a good question for you, for a quiz. I'm trying to capture the full frequency of the drum kit using the overhead tracks, or two overhead cymbals. What kind of microphone do you think I'm using to capture the full frequency? The answer is a condenser mic. Condenser mics are the ones that capture full frequency. Okay, so now on each of these tracks, I have a variety of inserts, or sends. On the drum kit, I don't have any sends, but I do have inserts. You can see I'm EQing the room mics. I am adding some compression and a little bit of EQ to the overheads. Same thing here. Here are the tom mics. I'm adding some EQ, boosting certain frequencies, reducing certain frequencies. And remember, the two most common types of inserts were EQ and compression. Now, when we come down here, you can also see that I'm panning certain elements. Essentially, what I'm trying to do is recreate the sound of the drum kit live. I've got all these individual microphones being recorded to individual channel strips or tracks. And if I just have them all go straight up and all play right in the middle of the stereo field, it doesn't really sound very real because when you're sitting 
behind a drummer or sitting in an audience watching a drummer play, as he plays, you're hearing different elements of his drum kit come from different places. So I'm trying to recreate that positioning of the drum kit artificially using pan. Okay? So if I solo the hi-hat, you can see I've got it mainly panned over to the left side. And that's because I use what's called drummer's perspective. Drummer's perspective is where the drum kit sounds um, and appears in the same location uh, as the drummer would hear it. So if I'm playing the drum kit, I have the hi-hat over here on the left side, and the snare drum's in the middle, and the bass drum is in the middle. I'm playing with my right foot, and then I have a variety of cymbals on the right and left, and then the toms go from high to low like this, so left to right. So that's how I have things panned in my drum kit here. You can listen, you can hear the hi-hat is kind of to the left. It's over there. And if you also just solo the overheads, you'll also kind of hear the hi-hat a little to the left. Okay, so I could take this, and I certainly could rearrange it, and put the hi-hat on the other side, like that, something that I could do, but that's not what I'm going for. I'm going for drummer's perspective, so toms high to low, left to right. High tom is left, mid tom is more to the right floor tom is all the way to the right almost. Okay, so that is how I'm using pan to create an artificial um, perspective that my audience, who happens to be those listening to the recording, can hear. The second thing I wanted to discuss with you is something called busing. Bussing is a concept in audio where you transport an audio stream from one location to another. That's pretty much the definition of bussing. You are transferring audio from one location to another. Okay, so when may you want to do that? Well, maybe you want to affect uh, all of the drum kit the same way. Okay, now you could do something kind of similar by in this instance, maybe placing the same plug-in on all of these channels. Maybe you go, oh, I want to um, add this compressor to all the channels. Okay, you certainly could do that, just like we did. Okay, but that's going to be a little different than if we actually apply one of these compressors onto this drum bus, and I'll explain what drum bus is in a minute, but we certainly could do it that way. Now, as I mentioned, bussing is the concept of taking an audio stream and moving it or transporting it to another location. Now, if we were to take this drum kit and bus the individual channels all to one stereo channel, that would essentially allow us to affect all of the drums with one particular plug-in or one particular insert. Okay, In this case, we're dealing in a software environment, so uh, the inserts are actually plugins, even though it does say here inserts. Okay, back to busing. So the concept of busing is to send or route or relocate audio from one location to another location. You can see here that we are bussing the drum kit from one location to another. If you look up here, I'm using the drum bus as a means of transporting all of the signals from all of the drum kit channels, and I am sending all of them to this thing called the drum bus. So the output of these channels is going to the drum bus. And then I've set up this additional channel here 
to receive all of those. So essentially, a bus is a way to route audio from one location to another. And usually when people get on the bus, it's kind of all or nothing. Everybody gets on the bus and they all go to this new location. Okay, that's what we've done with our drum kit. We had all these individual tracks, kick, snare, hat, toms, etc. And we're taking all of those and we're putting them on the bus and we're sending it to what we are calling the drum bus. We've taken all of the drum kit and we've rerouted it from here and sent it here. Okay, so what does that mean? That means if, if I play this, now that I'm sending all of this data over to here, if I mute this channel, it's going to mute all of the drums because everything is being sent to this location. Okay, because this is the input and this is the output. So we're outputting all these channels to go to this spot. Now, the summation of all of these channels is something that we call a submix. Okay, submix is the process of taking multiple channels and routing their audio so that um, they are all summed up or subbed together onto two new tracks. Now, it's slightly different than in when we talked about multi-track recording, when we talked about bouncing down. Bouncing down was the process of taking multiple tracks and actually putting all of them on new audio tracks. Now, submixing is a very similar type of thing, but we're not doing anything that's destructive, okay? All we're doing here in Pro Tools is we are routing these signals to this stereo channel, okay? Could we undo this at any time? Sure. All we'd have to do is reroute the audio to a different location. Okay, so now it's not going to the drum bus, but these things haven't been joined together. They haven't been bounced down. Okay, so now I'm going to reassign these back to the drum bus so that everything is routed over here to the drum bus. Okay, so that is the process of submixing taking multiple tracks and routing them such that they go to different tracks. Okay, that's what we've done with the drums here. Okay, that's it for this tutorial on submixes and busing. In the final tutorial, video number six, we will uh, finish up by talking about the mix process.